Good evening, and welcome to the happenings in Medfield. On a monthly basis, we have the opportunity of sitting with one of the selectmen discussing the happenings in Medfield, his particular corner, what he does, how he motivates within the three selectmen. And this time, it's always my pleasure to introduce Mr. Mark Fisher, one of the selectmen who now has, as I said earlier, off camera. All of them, in fact, have a plate full. But welcome. Nice to see you again, Jack. Nice seeing you again, Mark. Nice. Let's begin with two factors. Mm -hmm. Number one, I know that the there is going to be a potential special meeting late in the fall. What does that encompass? Well, we've got a couple of things that are important coming up. Um, you know, the, um, the Permanent Building Committee has been working on their plans for the uh, new public safety building, the police and fire station, which will be situated right where the current building is right now. So, you know, we had gotten approval at town meeting in the spring to get the final plans and stuff drawn up. So they'd like to come back to the town and uh, get a proposal with some hard numbers and get a uh, town vote to approve to build a new building. So looking probably late fall, early winter and stuff, whenever they're ready, I think, to get to get that and have a special town meeting on that. And at the same time, I'm hoping that we'll be able to um, jointly kind of tie in with the, um, you know, any type of a, a state hospital uh, purchase, you know, and try to get that, get that all done and stuff. So uh, we've got a, uh, we've got a busy, uh, a busy fall and winter, you know, coming up again. It doesn't seem to let up at all. It really does. It, yeah. it, uh, by, I have viewed a few of the meeting. Yeah. I've watched you people, and you, <laughs> nothing seems to light up at all. The, the special town meeting, yeah. one of that can be, will that be placed to the viewers as far as cost is concerned for those two buildings? Yes, we should hopefully have some. Yeah, definitely for the, the DPW, I mean, for the uh, public safety being, we'll have hard numbers. Uh, we've really felt, I think it's worked very well uh, when we went to the town for the DPW building to have people vote with a specific number as opposed to a range or an estimate and stuff like that. So uh, they'll be bringing hard numbers when they're ready for that meeting so that we can vote on a specific plan for the new public safety building and a number. You know, they'll have had some, some um, bids go out. So, uh, so that'll be great. Um, anticipating that that's going to go smoothly. You know, the committee's been working on it for a number of years now, kind of taking it step by step. So, and they've done a great job. You know, the DPW building is almost done. And, they are. Uh, yeah, uh, and they should be ready. I think in August they're shooting for to have it uh, incomplete and stuff. And uh, I know we'll have a grand opening for that and stuff, and people can see that. And if they, uh, people have a chance, they should swing by. You know, they can go down and check out the yard and stuff like that on a weekend or whatever, drive through, and you'll see pleasantly surprised. The building is really, really nice. It really is nice. nice. I have been over there, Mark, and they've done a beautiful job. Yeah. That's quite a building. Yeah, it's really good. I think they, obviously, we really focused a lot, everyone did, on making sure the materials are very durable and really going to last forever. So people can see that I think with the with the, the masonry work and everything that really particularly outside, it's really kind of maintenance free and stuff. So it's built to last a long time, which is good. Now the big question. The uh, end of July yeah. is quite a mix and marry factor. Yeah. I know that Denise Garlic and Tim and Senator Timothy is working on the project, and I know that you people there as selectmen have done a tremendous job. The state hospital, that is coming to a close relative to presenting it, approved, and the governor's signature. What does it look like? Uh, it's obviously be right down to the wire, and I think this is, seems to be the typical political process, I think, you know, where they're coming to the end of a session, July 31st, and uh, in many cases, um, I think a lot of the bills kind of get all jammed in at the end and stuff like they can get votes, but uh, it is our understanding, it's our bill in order for the uh, legislature and the governor to sign off on us um, purchasing the, you know, the state hospital land from the state is moving along nicely. 
uh, going through different committees, and uh, we're just kind of waiting for the different votes to take place, uh, you know, uh, and to get the governor's signature. So I'm sure it'll be right down to the wire. It'll be the last week in July when we hear. But don't anticipate any issues. I'm, you know, Westboro is also on the same track for them to purchase their land to do the same thing too. So. Um, uh, Barring any last-minute stags, I think everything's you know on track to get the time, which will be very exciting. And then we can start to move forward, which is the next step, you know. I understand that uh, a committee, I you gentlemen have been selected relative to the uh, ground on the hospital. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, we've just um, appointed a new redevelopment committee. Uh, they're going to be meeting in the next probably few weeks or so. It's always tough in the summertime with people's vacations and things mm -hmm. like that, but uh, they'll be meeting shortly uh, to get started to kind of formalize, get the ground rules started and kind of uh, establish kind of their, uh, you know, what's going to take place. And then we'll kind of get working on that, you know, as far as um, kind of laying out a plan of attack timelines. And I think probably the first thing that we'll be interested in kind of doing is looking at, um, you know, engaging with a, um, uh, you know, hiring a firm that can kind of work on a master plan for the, uh, for the property, for the, for the town, get some experts in there to help guide us uh, through that process. So I would anticipate that'll probably be the, the first step that we'll start to, to work on. I have, in my meanderings in that field, a couple of questions. It's, it's premature, yeah. I know, because nothing has been consummated right. yet by the governor. It's premature. And a couple of people have asked, you know, he said a lot of those buildings up there are antiquated, and he said, what is happening? Is that up to Medfield if they're declared inoperable? for Medfield to tear them down? Or? Well, sure. Once we own the property, then it's really in our hands as far as trying to figure out as a community what's going to work best, you know, within the confines of a master plan. And there are some historic district issues that you'd have to deal with, too, with some of the buildings and stuff like that. So it'll be very interesting to see. I know the committee is working on having an in inventory done of the buildings as far as their conditions so we can get an updated um, kind of understand, you know, what conditions they are and what what they what what might be able to save and what not not be able to save with some of the buildings depending on their roofs and things like that, and we'll just have to take it take it step by step. It's it's hard. There's a they're very beautiful, but yet they're very old, and they sometimes are. older buildings sometimes don't lend themselves as far as a layout to uh, to a modern use. You know, you might find the room layouts in some of the buildings might be too confining or not, might not be able to reconfigure it. And sometimes, in many cases, you know, it costs a lot more sometimes to fix up a older structure than to start fresh. But that being said, you know, you want to, you know, we want to work really hard at trying to capture as much of the character, I think, and the historical flavor of, 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 the, um, of the site, you know, and not lose it all. So it'll be, uh, it'll be a very interesting process, you know, to see where it we is, go. It is, no question. Know? One yeah. historical building that people have talked about. In fact, I was talking recently about it. To maintain it, which is a beautiful building, yeah. as a chapel. Yeah, and I think that's, I think by everyone's kind of informally, I think everyone feels that that's your priority, you know, the centerpiece of the, of the core campus up there. Mm -hmm. So I would anticipate that a great deal of effort will go into trying to figure out how to reuse that building. I, I would think that that will probably stay. I can't imagine it probably would come down because everyone feels very special about that and really want to kind of build something around that. You know. People do. Yeah. So now it's just uh, sit, hurry up, and wait. wait. Exactly, exactly. That makes that, it very, very difficult. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have found that uh, the state hospital, a lot of people discussing it. It's been over the years. Oh, Mark, sure. And uh, got a lot of acreage. And it brought up another point. If, unless yeah. that word is accentuated, if, if everything goes along all right and uh, Medfield purchases that yeah. property, housing for the seniors. Yeah. No, I think that's very important. It's certainly, um, we as a selectman, and I think everyone in town government understands that that is a big priority. You know, as we're well aware, um, it's very difficult for people as they age and they want to stay in Medfield in perhaps a smaller home 
they've got very limited opportunities or alternatives. And w I think we would all feel very, very good to make sure that we kind of carve out a, a section of that to provide that, that opportunity for people that want to stay in town, be able to move up there, you know? Well, you know, uh, talking as I have occasionally yeah. to the seniors, one lady in particular, yeah. children are gone, yeah. sell the house, yeah. but where do I go? And consequently, some seniors now yeah. have moved to Norfolk. I know. But a lot of them want to stay right here in yeah, Redfield. I know. Yeah. So affordable housing is quite an issue. Oh, I agree. I agree. We're, I mean, the town really is kind of a victim of its own success, which many times happens. You know, we get a nice location. Um, I, th I think we do a nice job of kind of keeping the town looking the same as it always has, a little bit of a rural character, and of course a great school system. So unfortunately, the demand is there, and of course that's reflected in house prices and things like that, and it doesn't give people many opportunities, you know, for something that's more affordable as, sure. they, as they want to downsize. Because you take the average senior yeah. today, yeah. Uh, we'll say they're on a kind of a dual income. Yeah. They can't afford $500,000? Of course not. Of course not. No, they not, can't not. Afford no. And not to mention, even if they don't have a mortgage on it, just the taxes that go along with that. Anything That's else, what I'm right? About yeah, yeah, really. I mean, you think about, it. yeah, yeah. I mean, of course you can't. Of course you can't. I mean, that doesn't make any sense at all, you know. So, um, so I think that'll be a that that we all know. I think that's going to be a primer, one of the primary focuses of that land because we have a great opportunity to be able to take advantage of doing that. We got one shot to do it right. We got all this land to use and we that's don't, we're not going to blow it. Well, we, we won't. I, I know we won't. You know what oh, I mean? That's the most important thing. thing. One yeah. shot. Yeah. Speaking of that, let's talk about the water tower. Yeah. Yeah. So that's coming along pretty nice and stuff. Um, you know, um, folks will see, you know, hospital, uh, hospital roads dug up a bit and stuff like that. So they've started the first phase, which is getting the water mains, new water mains in, going up and down hospital road and getting ready, I think, to bring them onto the site. So that work is well underway. The town's in the middle of um, kind of working through drafts of the actual purchase and sale agreement for us to actually, you know, buy the, the land from the state. And then I know that the um, Water and Sewerage Board is working on the final bid process as far as the actual dismantling and, you know, construction of a new water tower. So it's coming along very, very nicely. You know, I'm really pleased, you know, boy, it's going to be great. Do you have any idea about completion and when it can be in yeah, operation? Yeah, let's see. Now, they, of course, they told us, and of course, I can't remember, but uh, I would say maybe late spring, next summer, would probably be all ready to go. I think that would be the case. I think it would be fairly quickly, you know, for tying things in, you know. Um, I think they move along pretty quickly once they get started and stuff like that. We really do need the, the extra we second need, water need, tower. Yeah. Really no do. question about it. Yeah, I mean, no we're, down to, we're down to one, you know. <laughs> and that's been on people's mind about, yeah. you know, the water tower. Yeah. And so I was just wondering. I know that you people there on the Selectman desk yeah. have worked very hard on it. Yeah. But it was just a point of completion. Yeah, you know, yeah, so, so it'll, be, it'll be terrific. Um, it's going to be so nice to have that, uh, you know, the water pressure will even out around town. Like I said, it's good to have, uh, it's going to be good to be able to have two towers to be able to use to supply water. Yeah. Now the other uh, situation that's arising, you know, we started with a program about an, an early uh, meeting. Yep. Moving the fire station. Yep. And moving the police. Yep. It is my understanding that if that goes through, yep. uh, and it, it seems like our conversation is all my ifs. Yeah. That when that is initiated, yeah. uh, the fire department will move to the new town. Garage. Yeah, DPW garage. Yep, yep. Now the police department, which is more very, very complicated, yep. will be moving to Ice House Road. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Um, they were talking about doing, yeah, having some temporary trailers there, but they've also been looking at some alternatives too with the police station there and stuff like that. So they're working through a couple of alternatives as far as what makes sense for them to kind of tie things together uh, nicely there. Uh, but definitely the fire department will definitely go to the DPW garage because it's going to be perfect, you know what I mean? They'll yeah. have, they can grab a few bays there to be able to get all their equipment in and stuff and, and work out of there. So I think that'll work out work out nicely. Well, as far as uh, the, police, the fire department, yeah. uh, adequate room there. But yeah. it was just a question because of the situation relative to the police department, mm -hmm. all yeah. the communications and all the other entities. Yep. Uh, someone said, well, I'll go to Ice House Road. Yep. Well, 
You got to move everything to. Yep. And that creates a bit of a problem. It does. It does. Uh, yeah. I'm so sure. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see how that works out. But they've been. I know that's one of the big things that the you know, permanent building committee has really been working on a lot. Is just you know is trying to figure out the mechanics of the of the move. What makes the most sense, cost effective wise, and, well, and, and efficiency and stuff. Right? Sure. You know, tie things. Now in. there's another question I have, and I'm glad that you've got this all out. As uh, start to work on putting in a remains along a hospital road. Now they're in that operation now yep. relative to the water tower. Yeah. Now let's talk about which on people's mind two buildings. The first building is right next to the townhouse. Mm-hmm. Was Oh uh, sure. The old uh, building belonged yeah. to Allen. Yeah. And now and uh, I understand what they want to do is uh, first floor is going to be commercial and second floor and then they're going to have the third floor for apartments with an elevator. Mm -hmm. What's the story about this? Well, I think just with the, with the um, I think the code I'm sure requires now to have elevators and stuff probably over certain stories and particularly I think the second floor they're talking about having office space up there so yeah. they're going to need that and stuff, the handicapped accessibility and things. So they'd have to, you know, Figure out, you know, get an elevator shaft into the building and so stuff like that. About an elevator. Well, the other problem yeah. that arises from that factor, parking. I know, always tough. Yeah, exactly. How to figure that out, and that's always a tricky thing. You know, with downtown where we want to develop and stuff like that, but there's limited amount of parking. So that's something that the planning board always has to wrestle with a lot. Obviously, when they when they're looking at uh, applicants to um, to uh, redevelop buildings and stuff. And as far as I think they have to take a look at as far as what you know what what the parking capacity is going to be at different times during the day and overnight and, and just kind of see how it fits in as far as for the different lots there and see what we can do. But actually you know, it's a good problem to have. You know, you, you, it's better to, better to be a little busy and parking a little bit of a problem as opposed to the town being a ghost town. And having oh, everything, true. you know, oh, so true. it's hard to get hard to get it just right, stuff like that. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how they um, how they work things out. But um, I'm sure the plan, I'm sure the building will come out fabulous and stuff like that. I, I, I know they've got a ways to go, you know, obviously with the permits and things like that. But uh, there'll be another handsome building that'll that'll get a little little freshening up and stuff. Well, that building, that's an old building. It is very old, yeah. and consequently, I, we were wondering. I'm talking about a new building. Let's, yeah. let's go right across the street. I know, huh? Brothers Marketplace, Roach right. Brothers. Yeah, it's come along pretty good, as you're well aware. You can see everything every day. They got the awnings up, the lights are up, and um, and we drove by last night. We were coming by, and they were working on um, doing a uh, a painting or a mural on the the long wall that kind of faces South Street as oh, yeah, it comes no, up. No, yeah, no. yeah. Well, that big large sign used, used, to, used to be, be. exactly yeah. stuff okay. like that. It was very interesting because we went by. It was about eight eight thirty last night or so, and there were two or three artists up on scaffolding there. They had a projector on the on the front lawn of the church across the street, and they were projecting the image onto the blank wall and then they were using the image you know and, and painting in the outlines Beautiful. of what they were going to do is not a good idea to do and they have to do it at night when it's dark so they can see what they're doing oh yeah that's yeah. great so it's uh it's it's coming along pretty nice i'm pretty excited about that so um and i think they're talking about hopefully getting open you know the the end of this that month. was a big problem yeah. because uh i've had people remark yeah not on numbers however just yeah. a few because a lot of women with their children, yeah. little ones, they used to drive into Lord's sure. parking lot, whatever, into the back, so they could go to the library okay. yeah. for the children, because as you know, upstairs they have yeah. a school. And I'm just wondering now, with the situation existing, yeah. uh, how soon that would be available. Yeah. And that was the question they sure. asked, because again, as I, we talked a yeah. earlier, parking. Yeah. And they yeah. would like, once again, yeah. the ability to bring over their children sure. to the library. Yeah. yeah, so it'll be very interesting to see how that works out. I think the parking lot's almost done. They're working on it again today. You know, the base coat is down. I know they're working on some trim things. they got to get the finish coat down. Obviously, the parking lot's got to be done for their opening, you know, the end of July. So I would assume things will be back to normal as far as parking, you know the end of, end of this month because they're pushing forward pretty quickly. And many construction projects, it seems like, 
they're months away and all of a sudden they kind of pull it all together in the last couple of weeks. You know, it's, it's amazing, you know, when they get a deadline and they've got to get things done. They, as I said to you earlier off camera, I had heard as to whether or not yeah. it markets a rumor yeah. that they'd like to open at the end of, uh, yeah. all, of July. Yep, so it'll be very interesting. So I think it should be all set, taking a peek in the windows and stuff, all the equipment's in there that we can see. You know, I can see a lot of the counters and the and the different cases and stuff. So I think you should, of course, you know, pulling it all together. So it should be really fabulous. We can't, um, it'd, be, it'd be great to see. And then once again, that's another thing that people will be in and out and uh, should make things very nice at, in the evenings and the night it's and stuff very, like that, you know? Because then as you go down, yeah. And upstairs, you've got, yep. the, you've got Zulu, yep. you've got the... Uh, yep, so things will be looking pretty nice. They're looking forward to that, too. Yep, yep. It enhances, and that's one question. Yeah. Land. Yeah. There is, and I have seen this on the meeting, got a number of committees. Yep. Is, do you have a committee that's exploring the fact of land that's available that can be used? Oh, sure. Yeah, the town's had a uh, open space committee for many, many years and stuff like that. So they do keep track of, of, of the land that's available. And there's really very limited land available left in town. And uh, they've mentioned that quite a few times with us. It's the rare, rare opportunity that comes up, you know, Redgate Farm off of Foundry Street and Phillips Street that we were able to, uh, the town was able to, to purchase and stuff from the Kenny family, you know, was a, you know, was a, was a nice um, thing to be able to pull off. But very, very little land left, there really is. And they do watch that inventory of open space and stuff. That's why the hospital is so important because it's yeah, really our last big parcel. Very important. Yeah, that we've got a lot of flexibility to use too. You know, many times a lot of the land that, that might be available to sale might have conservation restrictions and things like that. And um, so, it's got limited use, and rightly so, or whatever. But uh, seeing, like I said, with the hospital land, we've got an opportunity to kind of you know meet a lot of the different needs for the town That'd going be forward. Great. Yeah, there is a piece of property right across from the uh, center. Mm -hmm. Is there anything any talks about that? Oh sure, yeah, the lot three, the last lot on Ice House Road. So we've got uh, economic development committee that's been charged with. Uh, looking at uh, trying to find some uses for that. So they're um, in the process of getting a, uh, a request for a proposal, RFP out, so they can see if some people were going to bid on that property and see where that goes. So they've been working on a draft for that. They've been in to meet with us, and I know they've been meeting with some of the neighbors and uh, kind of working that out. So we're expecting them, they'll be back in probably the next month or so with a, a final proposal so they could put that out to bid and we can see what types of um, uh, you know, uh, organizations put some bids in so we can kind of make a decision there. It'd be great to get that land put back to use. Has anything been uh, approached? Anyone contemplating uh, taking advantage of that piece of land or is it just... Well, you know, we, we've certainly had, uh, we've had some people obviously look at that for recreation type uses and buildings and stuff like that. So that's that's one, you know, potential use of it that we've seen informally and stuff like that. Now, whether that comes together with someone actually making a true formal bid for that and to do a project, we'll have to wait and see. But, um, you know, that is at least is one of the first things. And we'll have to see. It's, it's got to be a use, obviously, that that's fits in, you know, with, with, with both the um, Kingsbury Club as well as the center down there so that it, it makes use of, of, of their uses. It's not infringing with them and that it's... Um, and, and the town gets the most economic benefit, I think, out of the land. So it'll be, it's time, you know, we've, we've been kind of hanging, that lot's been hanging around a long time, you know. True, it's true. nice that we finally have gotten a group of citizens that uh, have been willing to commit the time on the committee, Ann Thompson being one of them, um, to uh, kind of get going on that and kind of put it to bed, so to speak, you know. Certain specific areas have been brought up like when I was watching the selectmen meeting that you had on the 17th, mm -hmm. you have a number of committees. To what action are they contributing as far as you're knowledgeable as a whole source in many specific areas is what's going on. I yeah. mean, yeah. When we had this one gentleman who was representing a number of it's committees, true, yeah, he's not wanting to know, whoa, wait a minute, you know. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's good. It, it's always hard, I think, you know, um, 
You know, we're a little town, obviously. We don't have a big staff. We can't have a lot of professional people. The town can't hire many bigger towns, such as once you get the next size, like Wellesley, a lot of times they've got big planning staffs or a lot more paid folks that do a lot of stuff. So, But we obviously have to rely on volunteers. And that that's why we have committees. And we have a lot of committees that have taken on different things. And I think that's one of the challenging aspects, I think, of, of our job, our charge, is to try to manage the different committees, kind of keep them on track, kind of coordinate them. And it's hard, you know. Uh, everyone does the, always does the best they can because everyone's volunteering their spare time to do that. And uh, it, like I said, it's always tricky to kind of work on those. I think what we're trying, going to try to work on a bit is we probably maybe have a few too many committees that are kind of focused on different components of the downtown area. So I think we're going to try to, I think, work on that a bit and try to consolidate them and kind of focus them into maybe one or two committees with subsets, you know, so a little bit easier direction. It gets hard sometimes. You're not quite sure who's in charge of what because you've got all these different committees, you know, for doing things. Now, the master plan. Yeah. How's that look? What are well, you contemplating with it? Well, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how that comes about. Um, we'll have to see, you know, Sarah Raposa, the town's planner, will have some thoughts on where we go with that and, and some input as far as what we, what we select for a uh, firm to help us with that and stuff. So um, it'll be interesting to see where that goes. That's just kind of preliminary stages there and stuff. Well, you know, as I had said earlier in morning, I mean, you people got a plate full. Yeah, and we just have to kind of, it's important you just kind of try to stay focused on not one thing at a time, but a few major things at a time. Yeah. Next question. You, as a selectman, uh, have many specific areas that you have to fulfill. Mm. Name a few. I mean, and not. Yeah. It is, the reason I say that is this. Some people say, well, select money. They have one meeting, and, yeah. and then that's all, and then they that's go it, home and it, forget it. it. And I said, yeah. no, no, yeah. oh, that's we collect, not the, true. we collect the big money, so we're all set. Yeah. So, you know, the, so the typical, um, our, our selectman's calendar is um, for the summer months, uh, June, July, and August, we just meet every other Tuesday. So we meet the first and third Tuesdays of the month. Um, the rest of the season, starting in September, we meet three Tuesdays a month. So we meet the first the first, the third, and the fourth, you know, Tuesdays of the month. And we do have special meetings from time to time if something comes up and we need to meet if there's a deadline to meet. So that's where we conduct our normal business. And the meetings, you know, usually go, you know, two and a half, three hours or so to kind of take care of things. And then there are various committees that we try to um, get to their meetings just to kind of keep up to date with what they're doing uh, and so that we're kind of knowledgeable. And, uh, and a number of us serve on some different committees too on the side too. You know, I'm on the capital budgeting committee and the, um, the no sharing committee when we meet with the different unions and things like that. And all the different selectmen have some different side things. And then we've got our different public uh, service responsibilities. You know, we've got our, uh, you know, our Eagle Scout ceremonies and yeah, Girl yeah. Scout Gold Awards and right. various things. Yeah. I had note that uh, in many of the situations that exist, uh, each one of the selectmen say, what have they been doing? Yeah. You've covered quite a bit of territory. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. Well, there's always a lot of things going on. A little quieter, obviously, in the summer, which is nice, but things always pick up in, in the fall. And, you know, we've obviously we've got Memorial Day, and we, you know, we've got all the different different holidays that we try to, Veterans Day, different yeah. things to do. So, so different things there. And we get, what's very good about, and has always been the case with the selectmen, um, whoever is serving is, you know, we, we try to split things up so that, um, you know, so we've got a, we, we kind of cover a wide range of things. Uh, a number of things all three of us do try to make. We can't always necessarily do that, but many times we split up different responsibilities according to our interests and our time commitments so that we, we cover a lot of ground between the three of us. Yeah, I know even on the, the foundation that yeah. they have, I, I noted your presence there yeah. also. And I'm just wondering. I think we've covered quite a bit in this, but there's a couple of questions. It was brought to my attention <clears throat> right next to Tilden. Yep. On uh, Palm Street. Right. A lot. And that state. Mm. But I don't know as to whether or not you, you or the selectmen can approach the Senate state because. That would be fine to build 
more affordable oh, housing I agree. right there. I think extension really, as far yeah, as going right down the street, I agree. You could extend yeah, Hillman. I agree. I think it's a good idea. We've certainly talked about that, and it's something we just haven't been as focused on perhaps as we should. Yeah. yeah. And it certainly has come up a number of times, and it's something we need to do, obviously, to kind of keep keep the pressure on there. And to figure exactly, and I'm not quite sure what the how the process is, the mechanics of that, as far as how to take that, because it's kind of like a, a it's kind of like a state town partnership kind of as far as how that's handled. And there's a obviously there's a board that that handles that too. So uh, it's something I think we definitely need to to try to work on a little bit more. Yeah. I I just wondered because uh, that had been mentioned to me yeah. also that you have that land right next right to there. Tilden I know. that just you right could there. build on it and you know yeah. extend Tilden. I agree. And I agree. it would be it would help a bit. senior housing. Yeah, it'd help a lot and stuff like and that. And that would sure. keep the seniors in midfield. Oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. And that's yeah. very, very important. Yeah. Well, I see the old time on the wall getting around our clothing. Uh. But uh, Mark, there's a couple of areas, and it's a norm when I close. Mm -hmm. Is there any other areas that you'd like to cover before we say good night? Well, I think just uh, everyone just keep uh, keep yourselves tuned for things. We've got a, it's going to be another busy, busy year. Obviously, coming up, we've got a lot of very, very important things to cover for the town, as you're well aware. You know, we want to get a public safety building moving along. We want to get the highway garage done, and most importantly, we want to get this. We want to keep the momentum going with the state hospital. We've had some great, great input, great community, uh, great committees have been working on it. So. Uh, we're going to, we want to make sure everyone stays informed so when we do have meetings and public meetings that we have people come and we want to hear people what they have to say, particularly for the state hospital, so we can, we can do a great job of planning. You know, we're really looking forward to it. It's going to be an exciting opportunity, very scary because it's a, it's a lot of land there to take advantage of, but I, I know we'll be able to pull it off. I know the town will do a great job, as we always do with everything. We do. It's beautiful, Mark. Yeah. So much, and as I said earlier, you people got a plate full. Yeah. There's an awful lot coming up. Yeah. Special meeting, town meeting, money, situations relative to the hospital and other areas of the lands and so yeah. forth. It's an awful lot, yeah. believe me. Yeah. But I do want to thank you for coming by and sitting with me Always at the good. anchor desk. Always good. Always good to stop That's by. It's a pleasure. Good. Nice to see you again, Jack. Thanks so thank much. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. This is Jack Peterson wishing you and yours the very best. Good night. This program was made possible through the generous support of your Medfield friends and neighbors, folks just like you. And thanks for watching.